Let's have one more round of applause for the wonderful film. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got people in a little bit of a scattered order, but first I'd like to introduce the filmmakers, Sarah Karouche and Matt Maud. <laughs> then I've got magicians up here with me, Megan Smith, Tony Fidel. Andy Hertzfeld, Mark Paul, and, and our mystery guest, Darren Adler. And Bill Atkinson. I know. Bill Atkinson. Is Susan Kerr in the house? Would you come up here? Yeah, if Susan here, could you come Susan? up? Susan. Susan, get up here. All right, well, this is going to be quite the panel, guys. <laughs> um, I'd like to start by just asking you, that seemed like a time of incredible optimism. And I'm wondering how you see that in the context of technology today. Well, look, I think I, back then I was an optimist, optimistic optimist. Everything was just, it's all going to happen. Of course it is. Now, much more cautious optimism, right? Hopeful optimism, uh, conditional optimism. But you always have to have hope. If we don't have hope, especially for this political and situation we're in and all the other things, uh, you, you, there's no, work, there no reason to live. So we always have to have hope. We have to have optimism. But I think all of us through the experience got tempered to make sure we are focused and harnessed and making sure we're trying to do the right things for the right reason. I think the, the other thing that is different, that was learned there and is now different today, is that the things that we were doing, it was really hard to get to market. And it was, you, you needed these big companies and retailers and all this. Today, with Kickstarter and the App Store and all kinds of other things, two, three people can get together and build a company and a new product and see if the market will respond to it very quickly, even before they've finished it, in a way. And so, th that's why I'm so optimistic, is that we're going to see much more rapid evolution. Evolution only works if you have lots of failure. Right? You have to evolve the organism. That means failure of the organism. Death is required to evolve. And so we're, we're spinning faster than ever. And we're going to see a lot more evolution, not just in Silicon Valley like we always do. But now we're seeing it around the world, mm -hmm. right? In Europe, in China, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Andy always talks about being a card-carrying optimist when we were younger. I don't know if you you're still say that. But um, it really is a decision point right now, which is interesting. And that probably is for every generation. But you know, will we go towards a world of surveillance and a terrible world of the future? Will we go to the kind of world we were trying to generate with these technologies? How do we really help get everybody's talent going? How do we include everybody uh, in the ways that we could? And that's really what, what I was attracted by what all of you were doing and what we were able to do together in the beginning of, and hopefully you can realize that. Well, to me, I think just this moment in time is sort of an inflection point in the technology industry and just in terms of um, the good it does for mankind uh, the, or I'm, I'm aware of problems that I'd never considered before um, you know driven by Moore's law I was always so optimistic things get better and better and better and then when we see the stuff that happened in the 2016 election and uh, the potential for a surveillance police state and everything you know it makes me me think twice so what I'm hoping is is we um, get a as an industry get a deeper understanding of what's going on and and kind of course correct to make sure that um, our you know our dreams really really are valid and and come true. One of my favorite scars from this experience that it was so important to me in my life with General Magic is I don't think people who work with me today understand why I'm so obsessed with that's our vision and what's our first step. And, you know, you know, and I really learned that. I mean, a very expensive way to learn, but I learned that so deeply and it's affected every project that I've always done. And uh, you can't do without either. 
you know, and, and uh, uh, you need a little of both. And so I don't just know that, I have it imprinted on my bones. Uh, yeah. Managers are worthwhile. You really need managers and people to help guide and ship things. You really need it. I'd like to hear from each of you what it was like to relive those memories and see that wonderful footage. In general, seeing the movie reminded me of the incredible freedom there was to just think about things and visual things and try all those goofy visual analogies, some of which I look at and I cringe, and some of which I look at and think, yeah, we had emoji. So. You know, I, I think that uh, it's so incredible to see all of us in those times and, and everybody, you know, and many of you are here in the theater. Uh, what an amazing team. And uh, one of the reasons I especially wanted Susan to come up here is that uh, Susan and Joanna and, and everybody, you know, we were a much more gender balanced team than most of Silicon Valley. Uh, and uh, it just was that way. We were also a much kinder team. There was a lot of kindness uh, in the intensity and the pursuit of happiness, pursuit of the dream. And I, I think it's it's worth noting that because culture really matters and I learned from many of you guys that Steve Jobs himself also, uh, you know, he used to make the one person in the Mac team who had kids go home for dinner. You know, so there's, there's this ethos that's come into Silicon Valley that's not correct and uh, you guys always remind me of that and so it's fun to look back at what it's like to be on an extraordinary team that's more inclusive and is kind and still accomplishes a lot so it's, it's great to see that. Uh, so, uh, my recollection of this is that all the magicians are much better dressed now. Um, <laughs> the hair, the hair. So. Um. <laughs> well, nice shorts, Tony. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, that comment would deny quote me. It was very hard for me to agree to participate in the film. Very, very, very hard. Because I took it um, as, well, I was kind of the leader, more or less. So going back to that time and tearing open that, that, you know, opening that door and going back into that cavern was very, very difficult. And, uh, and Sarah got me over the, over the top. Um, in part because my family's here. My, my family's here. And they, they were, you know, they were impacted massively by this. I refer to that in the film. So what I wanted to do, following on what Dee did, was to ask the families, as well as the magicians, to stand up. Because you took the hit, just like we did. So please stand up. Families, please stand up. Thank you for letting the magicians be magicians. So many of them have come and said that was the best time of their lives um, and uh, most meaningful. So with that, I'll pass it along. <laughs> I didn't make it out to New York for the Tribeca Festival, so this is actually the first time I've seen this movie. And uh, for me, it's been very healing. When I think about a relationship that's passed, I tend to remember the last parts of it, which aren't always the nicest parts. And I remember about General Magic, how we failed and how we let down our investors and how we really didn't really make devices that people bought and used. And what this film, has helped me to see is, first of all, the kick-ass fun time we had as a team working together. <laughs> Independent of making a project and making a product, we, we had fun together. And second, that even though the product we were trying to make was ahead of its time and failed and our investors lost their money, the ideas were not that lost. The ideas are in our pockets today and we're addicted to them. <laughs> so in those two ways, I realize first we had a great time 
and our work did have impact, e even if it wasn't in the product we were trying to sell. So to me, this is, the movie is healing because it reminds me, you know, we, we did have a good time. So, so parts of watching the film are pretty emotional to me and, and somewhat painful, just sort of getting my nose rubbed in, in all the mistakes I made, um, you know, re-experiencing the failure sort of vividly uh, is, is, is sort of emotional and I, I could probably do without it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> The, uh, the last part of the movie is, is, is redemption. It's, it's up, uplifting. And um, that, I think, one of the great things about the film is, is the emotional arc. It, it takes you through from the initial highs of the excitement to the, to the lows of, of just seeing your dreams crushed. Uh, and then the redemption of seeing uh, the great team we put together go on to fulfill what we were trying to do, uh, which turn, kind of turns it into a success. So I think the film did a, a really great job. I, I, something I wish for everyone here is that you could have uh, such a magical restoration of memory um, that, that these filmmakers, thank you so much, uh, Matt and Sarah, and all the rest. Um, it's, uh, I can't tell you the emotional power of highs and lows that for me is different from someone else watching the movie. Every time that hat spins, <laughs> I feel something in my stomach. You know, <laughs> you know, you know why is it even there? And, 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 the, you know, the, the little glimpses of day-to-day -day life are uh, tap just wealths of, 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 of uh, memories. You know, this really is a uh, was an incredible family and place to be. I think for me, there's, um, there were many moments in terms of reliving the story that are important. Some are funny, some are very poignant. But I think there was, there's, a, there's one very secret key in the film that I hold dear to my heart. And it's the willingness and ability to look at yourself and look at what you're doing and break it down to recognize what's not working and to admit failure, to admit your mistakes. And it's such a hard thing to do. And I went through this, I walked that walk with Mark. Um, it so, takes such courage to do that. Um, I, ha I have nothing but admiration and gr gratitude for the fact that everybody here walked that walk and many people in the audience. And I just think it's the most powerful thing. And if you're willing and able to do that, it is, that is redemption. And that gives you a power and a magic that is unstoppable. I think that's a very good hopeful note to end this all on. So I'll thank you all for coming. Thank you to all of you. Yes? Um, if you could all stand up, please. Pick up your phones, uh, turn your torches on, or your flashlights, I'm sorry, I'll speak American. Turn your flashlights on. Okay, so I'm gonna take a picture of you all uh, as you're doing this. Uh, I just want you guys to think about it. Do you want me to hold yeah. you? The, uh, the phones uh, that you're using were made by the people that stand and sit and are around this audience. <laughs> and then like wave them in the air a little bit, like having a great time. Look at you guys. You guys are the best. Uh, thank you all very, very much for coming. Good night.